Hello, everybody. I'm happy that you joined me today in this webinar. For everybody who doesn't know me yet, I'm Tobias from Dynaset and Area Sales Manager in Central and uh, North Germany, as well as Austria. Yeah, I'm very happy to present you this webinar today. And uh, yeah, let's dive into it and have a look at the content. I separated this presentation into three parts. Uh, first will be an introduction about why is it a good idea to install hydraulic equipment to your vehicle? So basically answers the question why you uh, watch this webinar, basically. The second uh, part will be more about the Dynaset products. Uh, what solutions do we offer? Um, a bit more detailed. And then the last part, I will go a little bit, uh, let's say, on the surface, scratching the surface of, of um, installation and assembly of our products and also other in terms of the hydraulic system. All right, let's go ahead, starting with the first slide. The first question is why should you install hydraulic equipment into your vehicle even? And I listed three of the main points. The first one is it is always on board and you can use it at any time when you need it. So you don't need to anymore think and plan. You don't need to organize uh, the stuff and your uh, the, um, the, the, the workers to, to uh, arrange, for example, a separate aggregate for you. It's always on board, no worries anymore. Uh, then, that is from my point of view, a very interesting idea is that you use the main engine for something else than just driving. You basically use what you have. Uh, and I think it's a very good to use what you have rather than taking, for example, a separate engine with, which needs to be maintained, which needs to be uh, checked every now and then. And in the last, I would, uh, the, the last point is, uh, it is compact and flexible, and that goes through the whole presentation in here. I will always give uh, remarks about and show how compact and yeah, easy to use our products are and hydraulic equipment in general. It, and of course, as it's compact, it can be placed basically everywhere in the vehicle and it will save you a lot of space. All right, let's go to the next slide. I want to present you a couple of typical energy carriers, energy sources, if you want to call it like that, that you usually use when you do service tasks or when you are, um, yeah, also in transportation vehicles, uh, when you need to power something during driving, for example. Um, as you can see, I've Give a, put a lot of examples for electricity. Uh, this is not, of course, complete. You can think about any kind of electrical device that you can run with it. Uh, what I did not include here is, for example, that uh, when it comes to trucks, when you're speaking about transportation vehicles, uh, you, for example, could need um, to power elect uh, power a cooling system with the electricity or a heater that I, I didn't find a picture from that, but um, that of course you can also do. And then there's uh, compressed air applications. For example, if you make maintenance, uh, you usually or very often have these pneumatic bolters, which you use for, for, for fastening and uh, loosening tires. Uh, that is a typical application and of course cleaning and pumping tires itself, uh, which has to be done on the road in a mobile yeah, situation. What I didn't find from a uh, picture from is, for example, this um, molding system is called. It's um, when you have to make a pipe under the street and you you don't want to do, remove or dig up the street, then you have like this kind of so-called earth rockets in that sense that make the connection with, uh, I, don't, I think it's called molding device that you use for making a hole under the earth without digging the, the um, street open. That is a very interesting example. You can just drive with the 
service vehicle there and uh, do the job with the uh, with the hydraulic compressor and uh, the so-called earth rocket and yeah put the cables or pipes so the third one is um, is high pressure water that can be example for example for example um, cleaning bus stops or or um, or um, trash cans as well as of course piping systems you can see you see in here the uh, our dynaset ppl uh, pipe cleaning unit as a ex typical example for for uh, service tasks and of course it's very very good to have a hydraulic output in general when since you can use hydraulic driven tools with it that can be hydraulic cutting heads or uh, sewage pumps or for example our dynaset hsp you can use just connect it and then you can empty or get uh, the water from a field or something away uh, very. Wait a second. My PowerPoint is now a little bit hanging. Okay, now it's good. Um, yeah, the. I want to explain briefly what is the dinosaur solutions. I will go into detail in the second chapter. There on the upper left side, you see the. Uh, you see electricity. Examples: This is hydraulic generators, power boxes, welding generators. Uh, you can install in the service or transportation vehicle. Then you have the compressed air. You have different types of. We have different types of um, air compressors that we use for uh, for in in vehicles. Piston compressors, screw compressors, rotary vane. Uh, then there is uh, in high pressure water uh, side. We have our own. Uh, HPW pumps, which is a unique design and basically the smallest possible way to to create um, high pressure water. It has the best power to size ratio in the world. And as I, we have already seen the pipe cleaning unit and which is also of course, where is also of course used the HPW pump. Then you have a hydraulic output there. I exactly as an example put our um, valve blocks inside where you can basically also have a separate connection for the hydraulic uh, outputs for uh, running all kinds of hydraulic tools. All right, before I go to the example, actually I want to show you a couple of couple of examples or be a couple of pictures um, as for typical service and vehicles. Um, pretty typical is, for example, um, Volkswagen Crafter or uh, Mercedes uh, Sprinter. This is a pretty typical service vehicle that we equip uh, very often with our uh, with our devices and our units. But then there can be, of course, also trucks, such as a Scania truck that is shown here, or other kind of uh, Mitsubishi Fuso or or um, vehicles like that. Uh, what is especially in this one here is uh, in the picture is the Volkswagen Transporter T6, which is in the lower part, which which has a difference from the other ones because you, in that sense that you cannot order from the factory an hydraulic power takeoff usually. So in that sense, that means that you have to use a different, an additional, an external afterwards installed hydraulic PTO. I will get to into that also because we offer these kind of solutions. Good, but first I will show you, then I will show you now an example video about, um, yeah, actually a maintenance truck which is running in Oulu. This is a northern city in Finland. Let's check that out. Moikka, me ollaan täällä Matekon pihassa Oulussa ja meillä on yrityksen huoltoauto tässä takana. Jukka Koskela, mitenkäs tota, sinä tätä ilmeisesti ajelet tätä autoa? Joo, kyllä, tällä tulee ajeltua ympäri pohjoista ja huollettua autoja. 
Joo, sultahan löytyy täältä autosta ilmeisesti Dynasetin e, tuotteita enemmänkin. Kyllä, joo, siellä on pesurit ja aggregaattia ja kompura löytyy. Joo. Kaikki tarvittava periaatteessa. Kuulostaa hyvältä. Käydäänkö vilkaisemassa Käydään. sisällä? Yes, eli minkälaisia koneita sulle tulee päivittäin eteen? Pääasiassa kaivinkoneet ja pyöräkuorma, että sitä huolletaan. Teletrukkeja, kurottajia tämmöisiä. Ja täältä löytyy tosiaan sitten kompaktissa koossa nämä Dynasetin tuotteet. Minkälaisia on tyypillisimmät käyttökohteet? Pääasiassa tuo paineilman käyttö on meillä, millä näitä pumppuja pumpataan, öljyä laitetaan koneisiin ja sitten taas imetään koneesta pois. Ja virtaa tarvitaan, voimavirtaa ja valovirtaa monenkin laissojen käyttöön. Kuinka paljon tota, tämä on helpottanut teidän työtä? Kyllä se nopeuttaa huoltohommaa todella paljon, että karkeasti voi veikata siihen vanhaan autoon, niin tun- tunnilla saattaa huolto nopeutua jo sillä pelkästään, että saa laitettua mittarista yli tuonne koneisiin, ettei tarvitse purkista alkaa enää kaataa. Täältähän löytyy sitten tosiaan HPV 250 uusinta Dynasetin mallia. Mitenkäs tuo on toiminut? Hienosti, ei siinä mitään. Pesuri on kokonsa nähen kyllä aika tehokas. Yllätyin kyllä itsekin, kuinka tehokkaasti se pesee. Joo. Onko tullut vielä monia pesupaikkoja? On paljonkin. Joku kauhan pyörittäjä, tämmöiset, kun ne hiekasa pyörii päivässä toisin sinne, kun aletaan vaihtaa jotain komponentteja, niin onhan se hyväksi saahan pestyä. Ei me hiekkaa sitten hydraulikansikaan. So we just talked about the benefits of having a hydraulic. All right, that was the first example. I think you could see very well um, how compact and uh, yeah, well installed uh, the equipment was uh, in the truck and how little amount of space it really it took, it takes. Well, let's have a look at the second example that I will Tuliki show you driven right, gener- right now. This is a presentation from my colleague Hyk. We actually have right now in the workshop of our factory the truck of a client who deals with infrastructure maintenance. Here behind me you actually have a perfect example of the reason why installing hydraulics on your truck is an excellent way to have various type of power available to perform all the needed tasks on your job site. In the back over there, you will have a hydraulic generator of 6.5 kVA power. Here, a pipe cleaning unit equipped with a high pressure water pump, giving a flow of 50 liters per minute at maximum 460 bars. Adding to that, additional hydraulics output to be able to plug in any kind of hydraulic equipment that you would need. So this whole setup has been already working for the client for a few months, but he wanted to reinstall it on his new truck. The pipe cleaning unit can be controlled through the terminal, which is here, or with the remote control that I explained before, reel in, reel out, free and stop. Dynaset offers a standard in its catalog four different models of high pressure pipe cleaning units, ranging from 30 liters per minute up to 90 liters per minute of water flow and 180 bars up to 460 bars of water pressure. The whole benefits of having hydraulically driven equipment on your work truck can be visualized right now right here with this whole power concentrated in this very confined space in the back of the truck leaving lots of space in the front just separated with a 1000 liter water tank so that were two, that were two examples and i will get the in my mind uh, Still, and now I will explain to you uh, still um, the, the uh, benefits of having like hydraulic equipment in terms in, uh, in comparison to a separate aggregate, which is run by a separate engine uh, on top. Um, 
first of all, we have already spoken about it and uh, mentioned it uh, many times that it keeps the weight of the car and its minimum. So it is very, very light. Um, and as you have seen also in the in the video which I showed you from uh, my colleague Huck, um, there was a water tank included in the car. And of course, if you don't need to put a separate engine into the car, then you can take more of water or other equipment with because the engine weighs quite a lot. Um, if you plan to use a, a trailer rather, uh, then there's always the the thing about um, am I actually allowed to pull this trailer, for example? And uh, of course, you need to the, that comes on top that you need to 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 get it um, uh, uh, enrolled and uh, at the uh, register it. That's the word. Um, in Europe, for example, you are not allowed to drive uh, if you don't have a BE driving's license, uh, more than 750 kilograms, or if the complete mass is over 3,500 kilos. So think about you, there's maybe not working so many people who have this driving's license, perhaps, and um, there's only always a certain person who has then always to drive the trailer there and you need to arrange it all the time. So that would be completely out if you have very compact hydraulic equipment on board. No need to worry about that. And as we have said many uh, the last point, when, which we have heard many times, is that it leaves a lot of load space because it's so compact. And I like this picture very much because it shows very well uh, how, how much more compact the hydraulic equipment is in comparison to the to a um, separate uh, diesel aggregate. Even though um, if you when you look, the generator is 19 kVA and the aggregate is only 14. It is several times more compact than 19 generator, 19 kVA gen hydraulic generator solution. So that was it for the for the first part. I hope you were able to see the benefits of the hydraulic equipment uh, already. Now I will explain a little bit more about our products themselves and the technical specifications and some more details. Um, first thing that I want to, the first product group that I want to uh, introduce is hydraulic generators, building generators and power box systems. Uh, I will explain later on what is a power box and a welding generator. A hydraulic generator uh, you see here um, on the whole picture. Basically, I spread it quite um, quite a lot of different um, models. Uh, we have hydraulic generators in, in protection class IP23 or IP54, also higher protection classes possible. The protection classes is mainly like an indicator uh, where you can place the generator. For example, an IP54 generator is, uh, is splashing waterproof and it can be placed like in the rain and stuff like that. And uh, we have units with integrated electric central or external, so you can put also a cable uh, to the if you don't want to have the socket right at the generator, you can put an electric cable to the to an external um, um, switch box. Or you can design if you want your own switch box also to a, and uh, just have a cable output. That's also possible. We have different voltages and frequencies available in many parts of the world. There's different uh, differences in that that sense. For example, in the USA, you have uh, 60 hertz. And uh, if I remember correctly, 220 volts. In Europe, we have um, 50 hertz, 400 volts, or 230, depending one phase, three phase, 400. Um, yeah, that is available for many parts of the world to have a suitable hydraulic generator model. And we have low and high pressure models available. That means that we have uh, 
in terms of the hydraulic system. So if you have a high, the, if you have a, you have only a limited amount of flow available, but you can stress the um, system with a high pressure, then you, it's usually very much recommended to have a more high pressure model than a low pressure model. But if you don't have that pressure, you can have a higher flow and lower pressure. We have many different options about the hydraulic unit also. We have also um, so-called add-on valves, which you can place onto the hydraulic motor. If you, for example, in the in the right corner, there's explained, there's shown a um, so-called LS uh, block plus a solenoid valve plus pressure limiter. So that is a combination of, um, of uh, valves that you can place to the to the in front of the generator and then you have the you have the unit ready you don't need to anymore put use any uh, of course you have to design it but uh, you don't need to use any more separate valves this is for example suitable for an to be placed additionally into an ls system load sending system um, shortly explained the key code how we have uh, coded our models uh, this is um, first, of course, the product group. That is always so. Then the nominal power, the voltage, uh, the protection class, what we spoke about already, and then and the, then the nominal flow that it around, uh, needs approximately for be run, for running. Uh, that is very important. That it's always getting a minimum flow in order to keep the frequency at the correct level. And then at the end, there is an indicator about what is um, uh, what is the, the electrical specifications? What kind of so do I have sockets or a cable output or what kind of sockets do I have? That is explained at the very end. So let's go a bit into the IP23 models. This is the lower protection class, which is often suspicious when it's uh, when it's uh, inside a box, for example, the, the generator. And uh, we have last year, uh, published a new series which is called Super Compact, and um, that has uh, replaced uh, our previous series. And we are and has made our units, especially the bigger generators, even more compact than before. So that was a real improvement in that way. Um, we have a range of uh, 3.5 to 80 kilowatts by standard, but we have also made bigger projects, and I think on our YouTube website you see also um, 250 kilowatt uh, KVA uh, generator video. So that is, I think, I'm not sure if it's the biggest one that we have made so far. Uh, but it can. We we are always um, able to to have special projects with uh, with higher outcome, power outcome, if needed. Uh, as before, different voltages and frequencies are available for also for that model. Uh, and I, and um, what I want to mention also, we have first of all the I listed the standard AC models in the lower part, uh, which goes from three and a half to eighty, as I, I mentioned. But we have also DC generators, so generators that are basically used for charging the charging um, batteries very often or running 20 volt, 24 uh, volt DC or 12 volt DC systems. Um, as I've said in the beginning, I think I added always some measurements to the to the units for you to get an idea about what is the size and the, the weight of the um, of the unit and it the first one is uh, in, in millimeters, and for everybody uh, who comes from, um, uh, yeah, from the uh, USA, for example, uh, there's also an inch the the measurements. It will be on every slide the same. There's a couple of examples about uh, the pictures are showing 19 kVA in that sense and 35 kVA on the bottom. That is um, here we see the IP54 model. So the 
models that are protected from spray water and they, which are dust protected. We have um, models, standard models from four and a half to 50, point, uh, 4.1, sorry, and 50.1 KVA. Um, usually, uh, actually standard is until 30.1, but uh, in special occasions we have also made 50, but 50.1, uh, but also in there we have made bigger um, uh, or larger models. Um, and we are, of course, always open for new projects in that sense. Here's some examples about where is our generators uh, used and how it's looking when it's installed uh, in a vehicle. On the left side, you see an uh, area platform. This is a very, very typical example. This is not really a service uh, service truck, but I have thought maybe I'm or a service car, but I thought I implemented because it's a very common use. And there's of course also there's also service cars which have possibility for lifting uh, lifting people. So I included it, and this is just to give you like an idea about how is it usually placed into uh, into the. Uh, the vehicle and about how much of space it takes around. There's more examples uh, on the upper right. You see a 100 kVA generator. So this is special project it has been. And yeah, of course, we are very much open for new such kind of projects. Uh, I included also a, a picture of a, of a uh, boat where you can also, of course, this is not maybe a maintenance or service vehicle, or is, but it's nice to know that it's also uh, uses used in uh, boats. All right, I will show you one more video, which uh, which is in my mind pretty good, explaining about um, about hydraulic generator used in uh, drainage work, drainage renewing tasks. Welcome to the world of hydraulics. This time we're diving in to a construction site where old concrete drainage and well systems are renewed to a modern standard. With the help of Dynaset hydraulic system and hydraulic generator, the work group is able to renew the old piping by putting a plastic tubing inside the old concrete drainage. Two groups are working at the same time. The first group is putting the piping inside the old concrete drainage. Meanwhile, the other team is working on the well. New drainage has already come to the well and now it's time to put in the new well system. Here again, the van is equipped with Dynaset hydraulic generator that powers up all the electric tools that they need. Jackhammers, band saws, heaters that help to combine the piping together, planers and all sorts of electric tools. Powered by hydraulics, this team can work efficiently, fast and reliably in all their locations, making the work most efficient. This has been just a short example how Dynaset hydraulic generators can provide high quality electricity for all kinds of trucks and vans for all sorts of electric applications. That's all for this time. So hit the like button, click the subscribe and the bell to know the latest and greatest news from the world of hydraulics. And we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.
Welcome to the All right. Uh, yeah, I think this is a pretty good video uh, where it explains uh, where it very good explains about the benefits when you have a hydraulic generator on top again, uh, on board again. Um, yeah, I want to introduce shortly our welding generators also. This is when you work a lot with welding. Uh, it is, uh, it is, uh, it can be a very good idea to have the welder right away um, on board. So if you do a lot of welding, this is a good, a very good uh, alternative for you. You have also a AC output available, so you can also plug all kinds of tools with it, uh, and the welding function additionally to the welding function. We have models on, from 180 to 400 ampere. The, coming to that um, to that code of the of the name code, um, this is again as it was before uh, the product group in the beginning, then the welding current at the second, the 300, then the AC power what you can get maximum from AC power from it, and the nominal flow. We always basically give the nominal flow at the, I think, second last place where you can right away see how much of hydraulic oil you need. And the declaration about sockets is at the end as in the gener normal generators, AC generators. So I mentioned in the beginning that I will explain to you what is a power box, and uh, power box is that. Um, piece of equipment. This is basically a complete hydraulic system, excluding the pump. Uh, if you don't have any, uh, if you don't have any hydro or no hydraulics uh, available on the truck or service vehicles, this is a very easy way to install um, hydraulic system plus generator. So you have the whole, you have the whole system inside this box, and you just need to provide the hydraulics from the hydraulic pump which is uh, included in the uh, package usually and um, yeah, provided with the, to the terminal the energy that you need and then you get the electricity out. Uh, the, sorry, the hydraulic flow you provide to the, to the terminal and then you get or you connect the hoses from the pump to the terminal and then you produce your electricity. Very um, compact way, I think most one of the most compactest way to install a complete hydraulic system to your vehicle. In here a little bit how it looks from the inside. So you see there is a hydraulic generator, cooler, oil tank is inside. Then you have some, um, you need some control voltage for driving the, the cooler, for example. It needs to be powered for the solenoid valve to open, to switch it on and off. That is needed to connect there. This usually comes from the battery of the of the vehicle, this voltage. Yeah, and then you just have to connect the, have to just implement the pump inside where you get the mechanical en en uh, energy from the motor, transfer it to the hydraulic pump, and then connect it to the hydraulic ports. Here an, ex an example. Of it, this one is a, uh, the, the one on the right. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what is the application, but it's usually very often used when for applications for while you are driving. When you are driving, uh, you need to, for example, cool something and you need a lot of energy. Uh, and usually, such a power box system is very, it's, you can just put it in that small place there and then it is working as a it's a very high power and uh, provides in a very compact way the electric energy that you that you need for the for cooling something while driving for example or to heat something while driving very typical but of course you can also place it into a service service truck or service van uh, in that way All right, that was it for the electricity part. Now we got to the compressors. Um, this is, I will start with the piston compressors. 
the HK models. This is like very uh, cost effective and easy solution in that sense that um, it has a, for example, integrated airframe tank. Um, and yeah, it is it is a compressor basically for temporary use. So you can you will, you need it needs to be cooled down, uh, having some certain cooling uh, time to to come down and cool down. Uh, and yeah, this is this is a cost effective and easy solution, uh, as I mentioned. So this is not for continuous run, but it's a very good, for example, for cleaning. Uh, for for um, pumping the tires, for for using the boulders, for everything, also for most of the tasks that are used temporary, where the compressor is cooled down for some certain amount of time. We have two models uh, available standardly: 450 liters per minute and 1,000 liters per minute, uh, which you see here, and the dimensions I. I mentioned already, you see there also. Uh, this is a very, very compact way. And uh, as you can see, the fan is included, so it is also cooling. You don't need to think about uh, extra cooling uh, in that sense for the for the compressor block. Uh, of course, there's the limitations from the temporary use in general, but there is a fan included also, which is cooling. Then I want to shortly mention, very shortly, uh, the different options that we have um, with the uh, electric cutoff, the pneumatic cutoff, for example. These are options that you use for saving energy, basically. If you, um, if you don't use the compressor and it reaches the maximum pressure, then, for example, the electric switch is causing that it is the hydraulics uh, will be switched, giving a signal that the hydraulics can be switched off, so that saves hydraulic uh, hydraulic energy. So you don't need to lead it through the compressor. So those are ways to save some energy. Those uh, E and P and E uh, models. The Y, what is there? Uh, also is also cyclone uh, filters as are available for. For both models, the HK1000 is standardly delivered with a with a, a cyclone filter. Maximum air pressure is uh, different. Um, the HK450 can re resist eight bars. The 1000 HK can last 12. Now, the ones for continuous run: the screw compressor and uh, the rotary vane. Uh, compressor, um, the, they are basically used both for so, uh, for continuous use, so for example for flushing, where you need continuously the air uh, flowing through some to to flush something. Uh, some, for example, on drilling machines that doesn't now um, uh, concern us in the transportation, perhaps, uh, but where you need a Constant air supply, which is not cannot and is not allowed to be to be cut. The HKR screw compressors have uh, integrated oil oil heat exchanger, and that makes it like the most compact uh, construction there is because the uh, there is um, the heat from the compressor. Uh, is not cooled by uh, is cooled by the external by the or most of the time already existing hydraulic um, oil cooler from the hydraulic system, so we don't need to use a cooler for that, and the uh, and uh, existing cooler can be used for cooling the compressor down. Uh, with the uh, rotary vane compressors, there's an additional coolers in the cooler in the in front of the compressor block, so. That is good for if you don't have enough of uh, cooling capacity in your hydraulic system or cannot place some uh, more, uh, then this is a good solution. Um, I think I'm not going to go to do the detail again into the description of the of the name, but the first letter always, um, of course, shows the product group HKR and uh, nominal. 
airflow is then the second one. We have models from uh, for the HKR from 500 to 11,000 liters per minute. And with the HKL 400 to 7,500 liters per minute at flows of um, eight and 10 bars. Yep, I think that uh, that explains it. I think that was the basic uh, most important information about the screw compressors and the rotary vane. Here are some examples about how it looks actually uh, inside. Uh, I know this this first uh, the HKL uh, picture doesn't really is not really showing a service vehicle, but I wanted to show you like an example of the assembly. Um, how is it looking in uh, in the reality? The HK 450s I think placed in a service vehicle, a, a crafter or a transporter. And um, yeah, on the right you see a HKR 2000. You you can see how compact is that unit when you look at the when you look at the load space that it has there, the load area, loading area, that how much it has actually of uh, how small it is, how compact it is. And it delivers 2000 liters per minute of hydraulic flow, uh, sorry, air flow, not hydraulic. So, and here's, a good, here's an example, last video for today. Uh, here's an example about uh, usage of, HK, of the HKR hydraulic screw compressors, uh, screw compressor. Uh, for entire maintenance. So let's check that still out. That was it, and uh, yeah, there you could see very well how useful it is to have a compressor on board where you can do the tire maintenance with if you are specialized in this. Um, let's go to the next uh, product group. I will have to do it a little bit more briefly because time is running out. Um, shortly, the Dynaset. HPW pumps are the have the best power to size ratio in the in the whole world. It is they are as compact as it can be. They have the very high power output due to its very very special unique hydraulic piston to water piston principle that is used. Um, my colleague uh, Miko has given a very good presentation about a very good webinar in the last time about this. Uh, Please check that out if you if you are more interested about um, about uh, this topic about the HPW. Um, main advantage is is that the pump is very good in running dry. So, in practical daily um, tasks, it often happens that the 
uh, that no one is noticing while working that the water is running out. So that is absolutely no problem for this pump because it can run dry for for a long, long time due to the, its internal lubrication. Then I want to exp uh, show also that the tank back pressure is not a problem because you can even you can even connect those pumps in the series. You can put one pump after another. So you, when if, uh, pumps with hydraulic motors have, uh, you have to, um, you have to take care of that. That you are not. It's not possible to do that because, because the pressure is too high and the, the, um, the shaft seal is getting damaged. This is not happening with this pump. You can connect it in series even. Or parallel, depending on what you what you need. Uh, we have different models. Just a couple of those. The main our main uh, basic pump is the HPW 250. Uh, and you, what you see in the bottom is our new invention. It's uh, now for some time already on the market. The HPW 160, which is even a one smaller. Uh, yeah, range smaller than the HPW 250 and also very, very light and uh, very also cost uh, efficient solution. You can have with or without unloader valve, uh, depending on what you need. Generally, we have uh, pumps up to 1300 bars that I want to mention still also, and with flows up to 300. Uh, liters per, min uh, per minute for the water side. In the right side, you see uh, an overview about all the models that we have. I'm not going to discuss those completely through this list, but uh, please contact us at any time if you need more information about it. Here's an example uh, in service servicing with the uh, HPW water pumps. Uh, here you see also a uh, pump uh, which is connected parallel uh, in order to get a high amount of water uh, out of the pump with a, uh, with a good um, yeah and, uh, with a special hydraulic flow that uh, is limited to a, to a certain amount so you get a lot of water out from it um, and you connect it like that. Uh, here you see also on the left side the HPW Mobi this is a very, uh, this is made, this is for a very good for, yeah, you can take it out and put it to the, from the service vehicle and, and use it um, mobile. Uh, you can take the water from a well, from a well or from a, from anywhere, basically. There's a filter included and um, do a washing task. For example, wash the machines, wash, uh, uh, yeah, with all kinds of benches, all these kind of tasks you can do. Pipe cleaning unit. Um, I have shown you in the very beginning. This is also from, yeah, this is, um, Dynaset offers also this. We have uh, models from 200 bars to 460 bars on the water side. And the hose can be 50 to 100 uh, meters long, for uh, depending on the model. And uh, uh, we are using a special pipe cleaning nozzle in that, which is automatically going forward inside the, uh, in the pipe. Um, that is also maybe to be mentioned. This is very often equipped in service vehicles because it's uh, it's a very uh, a very efficient and very compact solution. You don't need to put any. Uh, you, it is a, a lot. It's a very big benefit when you have as much of space and as little amount of weight as possible, especially in such kind of flushing uh, vehicles for flushing or cleaning or pipe cleaning, because then you can take more water, more uh, equipment with you when you have such a compact solution as this one. So now I come to the accessories that I will do very uh, briefly. Uh, hydraulic pumps uh, we also offer, uh, especially adjusted to our HGV systems, which I will explain a bit later. Um, 
in different ranges, fly, uh, different uh, with different flanges and and axes also, and we have also high speed hydraulic pumps, which is, is which are especially designed for running while driving. They can be used for uh, up to 5,000 uh, RPM, for example. There's a, it's a special special pump type. All right, and then I want to present still um, the assessor in terms of accessories and our priority valves and dynasty installation valves because, um, yeah, they usually use with our products in, in front of uh, be placed before our products in order to control flows and, and uh, pressures of the hydraulic system uh, and lead. You know, and they have to realize that, first of all, the the unit gets enough of hydraulics and that there is enough so hydraulic pressure and flow basically and of course about the prioritizing which consumer gets uh, what amount of flow and this kind of things there is the principle explained about about uh, pv uh, sia so this is a priority valve it prioritizes the dynasit uh, device so that it always get the dynasit devices all to the designer, dynasty devices always provided enough of flow, and the rest will go to the other consumers. That is a typical example. Ex actually, mostly in excavators, used, but also in uh, service vehicles. And um, in order, if you, for example, have a fixed displacement pump which you run in different uh, at different RPM speeds, uh, you can take the overflow away with uh, with this priority valve. That you have the too high flow when you have higher turning speed, you have higher flow, and then you you take the overflow away with this valve. Different models is also there available depending on the size uh, of yeah what is uh, of the flow and also of the if it's placed directly on the pump, which is often in excavators done, uh, of course for different SAE flanges on the pump for the hydraulic pump. That is used there. Um, very brief, um, because but this is very often and very widely used in our service vehicles. Our HMV modular valve blocks. Uh, you are. This is basically for making a whole, very specially adjusted hydraulic system for your needs. You can decide. Uh, you can say, okay. I want this consumer, uh, like a cylinder or so, and I want this dynasty generator. I want a, a hydraulic water pump, for example, and we will here check the right solution for you and make your HMV block ready and offer it to you so that you can put the devices that you intend to use to uh, that you can just connect them with the hoses and, and everything uh, and then it will be it will be done. Basically, OK, of course, there has to be adjustment for uh, um, um, assembly work done, but um, this is basically a way to to operate several uh, different consumers at the same time. Uh, using this kind of valve blocks, which are specially adjusted for for uh, Dynaset uh, devices, but also for others the devices like cylinders and and winches and so on. And so very shortly explained uh, about coolers we also offer, which are automatically switching on depend, uh, at the temperature, a certain temperature level when the oil is getting too warm. This, I just explained this because in turn because we speak later on still about uh, about uh, HGW, HGB system, and there we use also coolers. Um, oil tanks we have, and the speciality of our oil tanks is that we are trying to achieve the best. Uh, mixing of the oil in that sense that it reduces the air from the oil the best and it, that it evens out the temperature. Then if it would be, uh, there, there are some designs of oil tanks where it's like the warm, where, which is where the output output very close to the, to the input of the tank and that of course doesn't create a good circulation of the heat. So our Oil tanks are specially designed so that they are spreading the heat to the whole oil. 
All right, that was the second part. Um, yeah, it has taken a little while longer than I was thinking. But now we go to the assembly and installation of the Dynaset equipment. So I will explain roughly about what you need to consider and and what is uh, and uh, the Dynaset solutions. How is it? How we put usually or often um, hydraulic equipment? How we install it to the to the vehicle? All right. First of all, rough uh, comparison uh, or rough. Um, list of PTO systems, which you can order, often order. There's usually big catalogs of uh, PTO systems from manufacturers uh, where you can define what kind of hydraulic PTO or hydraulic power take off you need. It can be, um, there's often transmission PTOs or engine PTOs available and also other uh, systems, but this is just a very, very rough comparison that we have. Uh, and the transmission PTO, which is from the gearbox, basically, uh, is just is often switchable, which you can switch it on and off, whilst the engine PTO runs basically all the time. Uh, and the engine PTO, this uh, can be then, because it runs all the time, used often used uh, while driving. Uh, so non-stationary use is possible. With, uh, I'm sure that there's not. It's not in all the uh, case pos cases possible, and it sometimes is switchable and not. But uh, that is just a rough uh, comparison and rough uh, list about what is available. We need uh, for designing the system. We need um, spe certain specifications. I listed them. This is um, Maximum torque, for example. Uh, actually, basic, maybe I will explain it like that. You, we have a, like a form which we then would send uh, send to you, and that we fill kind of together and out, and um, getting all the details, and then we can design the system based on that. We need, for example, maximum torque, rotation speed. What is the minimum? What is the maximum for the hydraulic pump, and so on. Um, transmission ratio, so that we know what uh, pump size we can define. If uh, maybe if uh, in that sense, often a higher transmission ratio is, is better because then we can use a smaller pump and so on. Uh, then rotating direction is important. Uh, of course, that because we sometimes cannot change it afterwards. Some hydraulic pumps you can turn, but not all. Yes, and of course, what continuous needs to be there. Uh, in the system, what is the requirement? All right. Shortly, uh, I will explain about uh, because we are running out of time. Um, I hope you still have some time uh, to spare because I don't think I will make it until the deadline is over or the, the, the time is over. Um, the HPTO system, what I spoke about in terms of the transport or that I showed you in the very beginning. Um, this is placed afterwards to the uh, is a system which is be placed afterwards to the to the vehicle because there's no possibility to get a ready PTO from the manufacturer. So that we we use this kind of system for pre creating our own PTO afterwards. Uh, which can then be used while driving and powering um, e hydraulic equipment. So that is, I explained the cooler and the tanks and the generators and the pumps before, uh, but now we are coming to that we are making a complete hydraulic system from it. Um, that is the main, we see in the picture, the main components that we use for this. And um, we basically design or, or we offer you the complete component system. The only thing that is needed is still like the wiring and the hosing and uh, hoses and so on. All that kind of, we, of course, uh, is not possible because it's always different to include. But uh, the components we will adjust based on um, the system. That is a HGV system and uh, called and um, yes, 
there's it's always different basically depending on it's very individual we uh, design this and we can also 80 kva and more and also bigger ones are in project based um, possible it builds basically a hydraulic system where there's only one consumer which is the generator because the hydraulic pump is the the, the variable displacement hydraulic ls pump is the thing that controls the hydraulic flow to the consumer. OK, I see uh, actually time is running out, but we are. We are. Um, I hope you still have some time. The, this is how it looks, this system. And um, and how is it connected? Very briefly, um, I think I don't need to explain too much anymore because it's it's fairly simple. Uh, designed. So let's go to the to the next uh, system. OK, the main advantage we have already a bit discussed. Um, about it that I will still mention that. Um, that uh, it is very interesting, especially when the range of the motor, the RPM range of the motor is very uh, varies quite a lot because you um, um, with a fixed displacement pump, you cannot realize this because it's so. Um, it, it, it would produce a lot way too much of flow, which is not needed and that you have to then under high losses uh, lead back to the tank. So you need actually a variable displacement pump. And. Um, and uh, that we make with this, this is. Uh, creating a way, way better efficiency a variable displacement pump, and it can be operated in high temp uh, RPM range. And also, this is uh, maybe um, of an advantage if you, you are very flexible in the placing, you can place the component everywhere you need, everywhere you where there is space, and you just lay the hoses as it, as it comes. And all the hydraulic hoses for powering it. There's the power box. I have already spoken about it, so I'm not going to go too deep into into this. But this is pretty much the same as the HDW uh, HGV system, which I explained before, uh, but in a box. So uh, there is already everything assembled inside the box. You don't need to put separate units uh, to the to the vehicle. All right. Now I go to the HM HMV box. Um, you can use the HMV blocks with the variable displacement pump, uh, which is shown in here. They have different kinds of valve blocks, different kinds of consumers. I mentioned cylinders that you can drive also with it. Uh, and of course, uh, mainly for our Dynaset, um, Dynaset products, for the HPW pumps, for the hydraulic generators, compressors, and so on. So you see every, every unit has its own hydraulic port where you take the required flow or pressure out or uh, or yeah adjust it to the specific need of the of the um, hydraulic equipment after all you can also use a fixed displacement pump with the hm uh, hmv system if you put a pressure compensator in the in front a priority valve uh, a block in the front, so you can use this as a uh, also with a fixed displacement pump. So here are some examples now, um, still about the about the, where is this HMV system uh, used, for example, or could be used in the sprinter. There you can see it in the pretty middle. Uh, of the whole, yeah, of the the door basically. It is they are like a little bit under the hydraulic tank, and you see it is fits there very well. It's very, um, yeah, very compactly so it fitting. Here's a couple of more examples. It's always when you need to drive more than just just one consumer, uh, then you. 
use the HMV. It's very practical to use HMV valves. Here you see it, see more examples. So last two slides, uh, and then I'm uh, this presentation will be will be finished. Um, this is just another couple of examples I listed still about what you can do with a fixed displacement pump because fixed displacement pumps are, of course, uh, the more cost effective, so uh, very cost effective solution, and um, and uh, yeah, often for example. Uh, in sprinters from experience or in crafters, uh, we often use fixed displacement pumps uh, also. Uh, there in the left, we use a so-called free flow valve, um, which is a mix between the pressure limiter valve and the bypass valve. So uh, if you activate it, then it will go, uh, if it's activated, then it will go through the, uh, as a bypass, go through the, and uh, takes, of course, it doesn't, of course, take the hydraulic flow, it takes always the way of uh, least resistance, so it will go through the bypass to the tank directly. So you are not using the generator or the device that is connected to it. Um, then, if you activate it, uh, this, this, uh, this will be closed, this, um, the bypass and you can operate the hydraulic equipment. Uh, on the right side is the same, but we added I added the ball, three-way ball valve, so you can choose which device you use. And that is very simple, especially when you already when it comes to that you already have a hydraulic system, uh, which gives you a certain amount of flow. For example, a very good example in my mind is when you have a truck. Which is equipped with a with a crane, a lifting crane. You have built already a lot of the hydraulics for the crane. They are necessary, and it is very simple to add a hydraulic generator, for example, to this system by adding a generator and a three-way bore valve. So, uh, and from the cost point of view, it is uh, nothing. Let's say like this. It is a very uh, very effective in cost because already the Building the crane is very is com in comparison to that is very expensive. So you can, it's a very much of an advantage if you can just you can just add the hydraulic equipment. It doesn't really it is not so big cost factor because you have already the hydraulic system there. All right, and at the very end, still like uh, what I mentioned also in some at some point that. If you have a fixed displacement pump and a little bit higher uh, hydraulic uh, variations in hydraulic flow, then you can use the RPV uh, SAE for getting this overflow uh, back to the tank with the least amount of, uh, with the lowest possible pressure loss. Yeah, and here's shown also a um, pipe cleaning unit that. That we discussed earlier, and uh, which I showed you in the pictures and videos already. All right, but that was it. Um, uh, sorry for the over time, uh, but of, I think we still have some time for for questions, if there is some, or uh, hopefully. All right then. Thanks for watching and uh, yeah, please don't hesitate contacting us at any time. Uh, we are very happy to help and uh, yeah, see you soon. Have a good day.